Welcome. I'm going to show you how to do a rule draft. I'm going to start down here at our current chapter of rules. And we're going to start with a draft of a rule that already exists. So clicking into my existing division 10, seeing my list of rule numbers, I'm going to start a draft on 10003. And here we get into the rule edit page. Again, we want to notice that we're still in chapter 166, which is good, and we're on the maintain rule page. We'll see the rule number is here. It's hard coded, so I can't change it. In our rule action, similar to our old forms, adopt, amend, repeal, suspend, and renumber. Because it was a rule that already exists, it's not even going to allow me to adopt, but I can go through and select the different ones here depending on what action I want to do to the rule. When I click repeal, it's not going to allow me to change anything because on a repeal, you're not changing it, you're getting rid of everything. Suspend is similar, you're not allowed to change anything. It'll ask you if you want to suspend the full rule or a current temp that's already pre-existing. So just select the radio button so that makes sense to your filing. And then lastly, renumber is when you want to take the whole number and the whole rule that goes with it and renumber it to a new location. So it'll ask you what chapter and what division you want it to go to. We want it to division 10, and again, we want to check a rule number. Does a green check when we have a full four digits in there, and then check availability, hit that button. It'll tell you if it is or is not available. You no longer have to call admin roles. Then one thing it'll ask you, if you are one of the rare chapters that wants to renumber outside of chapter 166, uh, for instance, if you're an agency that has sister chapters like ours is, um, 166 is Oregon State Archives, but the Secretary of State has other chapters, it could be that we want to renumber it to elections division. In this case, we don't, but it'll ask you right here, same chapter or a different chapter. So that's the rule number. We're going to go back to amend on this one because I don't want to do that, but you'll see it asks if you want to continue. By clicking this, it's letting us know that we're going to lose that rule number. So we didn't reserve it or anything. It's just it's just not there because we're deciding not to use it. We're just doing an amend. Um, so continuing down, it's going to ask you if you're adopting the Attorney General's model rules by reference. By checking this box, you're testing that this is a model rule. Remember, a model rule doesn't require you to do a notice. Um, so we don't want to check this box um, if it's not a model rule. We already have our rule title and text auto-filled into it. So this is the current existing legal lawful text. The rule text, you want to make any amendments you have to either one here. Um, so everything's pre-existing what it is currently now. Um, so you have no limit, unlike the rule caption here on your title. And the rule text, you're able to do any changes that you see fit. Um, you have a little option to scroll and make this box bigger. Clearly, we picked a uh, short rule, but you have the ability to bold and italicize. And if you wanted one portion of it to be um, quote style or box text. There's a few names for it. You have that option here. I think a lot of us use note style. We have a spell checker, so a few new features there. And if you decide you did want to remove text and you have paragraphs, you can remove them just hitting delete on your keyboard as you do in Word. Keep in mind that one of the things that our unit checks for is to make sure your outlining is correct. Uh, so for instance, when we deleted paragraph two and three, we're leaving a hanging paragraph there. So just be careful to keep your outlining uh, in line with our rules. Uh, so then moving down to the statutes, uh, what we did here is we allowed you to be able to just write the statutes in once. Again, they're auto-filled for what it was before you started amending this rule. Um, and it, you just select the box. So if it's statutory or other authority, you make sure you check the box. If it changed from last time, and these are now not your statutory authorities um, or not your statutes implemented, you want to correctly check the box. You have the ability to just totally remove it if you don't want it there. Or you can add a new one if you have a new statute or a new house bill if you have changes. So in this case, they don't always have to be statutes. It might be a house bill. Just type that in and make sure you select which ones it applies to. Uh, rule summary here is where you want to summarize what changes you made to the rule. So this is a new feature that's been pulled out of the filing and put towards the bottom of the rule because 
for transparency's sake, we don't want to know what your summary of all your changes are, but tell us individually what happened in this role um, specifically to your stakeholders um, so that they know what, what changes happened here. Okay, and while we're at it, since we've just put a few things in, let's save our document. We encourage saving often. It'll let you know with a little pop-up here. And so we still see all the changes that we made are included. And then we decided for this rule, we need to have an attachment. Uh, so attachments are uh, encouraged to be not sentence-based. If you have something that's sentence-based, let's include it in a rule. So if you have photos, maps, graphs, pie charts, things like that nature, let's put that in here. Um, the ability to do it is this PDF, so if you have more than one, you'll want to make sure you pick one, and it has to be PDF, and it'll show you the name of the file here. Make sure you hit upload. Continuing on, we'll see this notes field. This is a new feature of the database, and it's an internal one. Uh, between rules coordinators and rules writers, if you use that role. This is where you can put notes like, be sure to add this rule on a notice. Uh, again, these won't be on the final version. These are notes just internally. In fact, the publications unit won't even be able to access them. So it's just an internal communication rules, communication tool. Uh, explaining the buttons a little bit. So one of the ones that we already used was save. Uh, you want to do this frequently. This just saves your filing as a draft. You can do this as many times as you want. Each time it should give you a little pop-up saying it did. Uh, return to dashboard returns you back to your dashboard, your home base. Uh, save as text is the ability to take everything that you entered in this online filing format and save it down. It's going to follow your computer-based settings and save it as an RTF. In my case, it pops up. Return to, this is in the case if you have rules writers and you want to return this rule draft to have, say, a content expert work on it rather than yourself. Uh, you have the option to returning it to a specific person that's a rules writer. And then the accept button is a new one, separate than save. Save saves a draft doing your work and making sure it's saved to the database. Whereas accept is the status of when your rule is ready to go and all finished, it's you hit accept and then it's able to be put on a filing. So only rules that have this accept status of kind of being finalized in their final draft form, final version, will be able to be put on a filing. So if you're ready to, you can hit accept and we'll see that status change on the dashboard. When we do rules, we start from the current existing ones, or we have that option to adopt a new rule. And when we want to adopt a new rule, we select this button on the very top of our current chapter rules. All the filing features are the same in this maintain rule page, um, only you'll notice they're empty because it's a rule that doesn't exist yet. Uh, and our rule actions in this case are limited just to adopt because amend, repeal, and suspend, you can't do those things to a rule that doesn't exist. So again, it asks you about the AG's model rule, ask for a title, you need some text and statutes, you need to summarize your rule to put it on a filing. Again, you have the option to do an attachment if you need, and the notes field. The buttons are similar here, um, and in this case, we don't have a new rule to start. I just wanted to show you, so we'll return to dashboard. <laughs> 